I'm here with Ashish Mira. Um, again, um, this time we're in Asia, we're in Singapore. The Shared Services Week Asia G6 has just taken place. No stranger to the stage whatsoever. Uh, Ashish, we've seen you on this platform in both Australia and in Asia. Yes. Um, and as always today, you didn't disappoint. You made some really bold statements. Let's have a chat to you about some of those statements made today. See if we can dig down a bit further into them. Um, keeping captives honest was the, the first one that springs to mind. What do you mean by that? Am I, so how do captives know that they are achieving the best in class uh, in this particular process or service level? And that's what I meant by keeping captives honest. Uh, a captive needs that external influence or a benchmark uh, to, to compare against. And when you're talking to a captive or you're looking at a captive operation, what is a captive operation? It is the same process that has been taken out of its, its corporate office, put into a, a, a new building, run and owned by that organization. That's what you'd call a captive or a shared services center and put in multiple functions. Who is that captive comparing itself against? Is it comparing itself against its own self? Or are there other benchmarks? Now, uh, on stage, Paul did make a remark saying, benchmarks are available, numbers are available, you can compare against that. And, and when I say keeping a captive honest, it's always good to bring in the mix of uh, an outsourcing service provider and have a captive and get them to start competing against each other to make sure that ultimately the best in class service is delivered to the end customer. So it is all about the end customer. It is all about getting the best operational metrics to ensure that you are uh, comparing yourself with the hack at best in class. And you think captives aren't doing this on the whole? That's the trend that you're seeing, that you're commenting on? Yes. I mean, if, if you look at the captives uh, in the marketplace today, uh, they have a particular process, uh, which was probably put in place 10, 15, 20 years ago. Some captives are constantly trying to re-engineer that, looking at it and seeing how they can do it better. Uh, while there are enough and more out there that continue to do it the same way, uh, it's just legacy prevailing. So you've got to keep them honest. You've got to make sure that they are pushing the envelope and not getting comfortable and just saying, hey, this is the way we did it 10 years ago and this is the way we'll continue doing it. But if we're going to make a generalization, you think probably more aren't doing it than are. Absolutely. I'd agree with that statement. Interesting. Any trends amongst who is and who isn't? Is this a by vertical, by maturity, by size of organization? Who are the hottest on this? Which captives do you think are potentially the ones that are leading the way and getting it right? Uh, I'd say the, the, the more mature captives that have you know, gone there, stabilized their operations, spent a few years, uh, been a cost center for their organizations and not uh, you know, a, a profit center as they set out to be uh, in the beginning of the journey, are starting to look at that. Some of these captives are now starting to pull in external advisors, organizations to come in and say, help me clean up this process. Help me uh, add some technology to this process to automate it to make sure we're eliminating work. It's not about uh, you know, re-engineering anymore. Those days are passé. It's all about how do we eliminate work and how do we move to the next level of automation, of technology, and it goes back to bringing business process and technology together uh, to give you that multiplier effect. So let's give some free advice to our captives out there. Okay. Because there is such a thing as a free lunch at SSON. You said we need to move away from KPIs, or they need to move away from KPIs. We need to start looking at business metrics, move away from operational metrics. Some would say there's a home for operational metrics, they matter. How do we go about this? What, what's the balance? What are you saying? Everything should be business outcome focused? We should forget everything else? Is that, the, is that nirvana? Uh, that, that is not nirvana. It's getting closer to nirvana. Uh, if, you, if you're achieving business metrics, your operational metrics have to be in place. It's where you focus. It's what you look at. It's, it's what you're driving your, uh, your organization towards. Uh, it's great. You know what? I processed an invoice in time. And? How is that impacting my business? So you're basically saying stop focusing on the little things. Stop focusing on the big picture and the little things will take care of themselves. Don't major on the minor is what I'm saying. Interesting. 
let's talk about hybrids. Yeah. <laughs> what a comment. I'm not a fan of hybrids, but I'll talk about them if a customer wants to. Some could argue that that is selling your soul to the corporate devil. Mm -hmm. What would you respond? <clears throat> so my take on, on hybrids is, uh, I think it's an evolution of the outsourcing industry. I mean, if you, if you look at the business process outsourcing space or the shared services space, it's a teenager today. Uh, really began in the, in the mid 90s and is a, is a teenager. The industry has to evolve. Uh, it cannot stay where it was. The first phase was bum on a seat, mess for less, take it to a low cost location. That was 2000 to 2005. Then you look at 2005 to 2010, let's move towards uh, transaction pricing. Let's look at re-engineering, right? That was that phase. And, and really now, the, the industry is maturing to two different spaces. One, bring technology and business process together so that they can complement each other and give you a far superior outcome. And the second space, especially in Asia, where uh, it is peppered with a large number of shared services centers, how does this business process outsourcing world support the shared services world or captive world? Uh, and I think uh, they've dated for a while and now they're ready to get married. Uh, so they've, they've, they've gotten to know each other, they see the synergies, they're making peace with each other and they can start working together. So will I go out there and suggest to a customer hybrid is the way to go? Uh, no. Why am I saying no? I will take two steps back, like I did say earlier, and say, what's the right operating model for you? Is it outsource? Is it insource? Is it don't outsource at all? Is it don't do a shared services? Or is it do a combination going back to the point of keeping the captive honest? How are we driving excellence in our environments? And that's the only way to drive excellence. So when I did make the statement that I'm willing to talk to a customer about hybrids, uh, I'm not close to it. I want to make sure that's the right model for the end customer. It's not about going out there, you know, creating fluff for a customer and saying that's the right thing to do. No, it's about truly what is right. Because in today's environment, if you cannot drive an, or add value to a customer, uh, it'll come back to bite you at some point in time. But to Sanjay's point, a year ago you did feel differently. Is your answer to that that when you said hybrids definitely no 12 months ago we were at a different period of evolution is 2010 to 2015 a third phase of the industry i, I think so yes and you know we we we, we can call it uh, the managed services era we can call it bpo 3.0 uh, we can we, we can name it or label it multiple things i think uh, the whole industry is moving into a different era uh, where customers are a lot more intelligent, they understand the space. I think service providers are moving away from saying, or, or looking at, uh, I just need to be able to win the next 50 FTEs of business, if you may, right? Or 50,000 transactions. I think uh, the service provider community is truly looking to provide value to the end customer uh, to move them up the value chain. So there you have it. Uh, it takes a brave man to change his mind and explain why, and you are nothing less. A brave man, bold words. It's been great fun having you, as always. Thank you very much. Thank you, Emma. It's been a pleasure always being on the G6.